What's up everybody? Welcome back to part 13 of my Wrecking Crew book review, Demolishing the Case Against Stephen Avery. If you're into the Making a Murderer case, I definitely recommend picking this book up. The author, John Farrick, has a ton of great information in this book. So if you're into the Making a Murderer case, the Brendan Dassey case, the Stephen Avery case, pick this book up. He also talks about other things other than Making a Murderer in this book as well. It is an extremely interesting read. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. That's where I got my copy. I definitely recommend this book. Now what we're doing is we're going over the information that was available at the time the book was written. A lot of new information has come out since the book was written, but we're going over what was in the book and what was available at that time. We're starting this part of the review off. He's talking about Ken Kratz. He's got a quote here from Bennett L. Gershom, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, who was a New York law professor and is one of the country's leading experts on the topic of pr prosecutorial misconduct. He worked from 1966 to 1972 as an assistant New York County District Attorney. Here's what his quote is to lead off chapter 23 of this book. We're on page 251 if you want to go check it out. The same ugly picture depicted in Ken Kratz's offense sexual misconduct with women appears in Kratz's solicitation of Avery. Kratz acted out his own self-interest in an utterly unethical way, abused his professional office, and engaged in conduct prejudicial to the administration of justice. That was from a sworn affidavit on May 10th, 2017. And they continue to talk about Ken Kratz states that lawyers generally advised by professional conduct inside the courtroom and surrounding the rights of the accused. But every so often, an oily person can come into the criminal justice system in a way that harms America's confidence in their public officials. He states when someone like Ken Kratz comes around, he's able to play the system to his own advantage because he's confident nobody will dare challenge him. Talks about how he did get murder convictions against Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey despite presenting two completely different scenarios in the trial. Grisham states that the back-to-back -back press conferences that Ken Kratz held on March 1st and March 2nd, 2006 constituted professional misconduct. He states Ken Kratz knows that a prosecutor is not allowed to disparage the character and reputation of an accused or disclose the existence of a confession or other physical evidence discuss any information that is likely to be inadmissible in evidence and express an opinion on the defendant's guilt. He states Ken Kratz knew that his statements would make it virtually impossible for anyone watching the press conference to keep an open mind about the case and the guilt of the defendants. Ken Kratz knew what he had accomplished. He states that during the March 2nd press conference, Ken Kratz suggested how Stephen Avery killed Teresa Halbach, but he knew during that press conference that everything he was saying was based exclusively on an uncooperated confession of 16-year-old Brandon Dassey. He states that Ken Kratz knew that Brandon Dassey was of borderline intelligence attends special education classes and was mild and was a mild-mannered introvert who was never before in trouble with the law states Brendan Dassey's confession presented a very different narrative than what Ken Kratz used in the original filing of the murder charges against Stephen Avery and that Dassey's confession was legally inadmissible against Avery for constitutional for constitutional and statutory reasons. In short, Ken Kratz had no evidence and therefore no legal bias to support the new charges of sexual assault and torture against Stephen Avery contained in the amended complaint announced at the press conference. Ken Kratz also knew that a four-month police investigation had conducted a bunch of searches of Stephen Avery's trailer and garage, but every and every part of the property, and yet yielded no forensic or no fees 
or no physical evidence to cooperate Brendan Dassey's confession. He states that Ken Kratz knew he lacked sufficient evidence to charge Avery with the acts described in Brendan Dassey's confession. Dassey's confession, as Ken Kratz surely knew, was inadmissible against Stephen Avery under the Sixth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution. Dassey's confession was also inadmissible against Avery because it violated a fundamental rule of evidence barring the use of statements that were hearsay. He states Ken Kratz brought the new charges against Stephen Avery in bad faith he knew that he would not be able to present these facts against Stephen Avery to a jury. That is why he decided to drop the sexual assault and kidnapping charges on February 2nd, 2007. Publicly disclosed those facts knowing they would be heard by prospective jurors and used to find Avery guilty before a trial ever took place. Being found guilty in the public. He states that it is one thing for a co-defendant like Dassey to make allegations that implicate himself and others. It is far different for a prosecutor to not only repeat those statements publicly, but also to endorse them as the truth, especially when there is no factual basis to confirm their validity. The short version of this is he knew everything he was doing ahead of time would destroy the character of Stephen Avery, so he was holding those press conferences to pull out all the information, to put all the information information out there publicly so that there was no way Stephen Avery and probably Brendan Dassey could get a fair jury trial. Ken Kratz knew everything he was doing. Allegedly, of course. So that's where I'm going to end part 13. I have finished the book. I do have a few more videos to put out after this one and they get juicy. There is a lot of tremendous information coming out in the next few videos. And uh, let me know what you think. What do you think of the information in this video? Let me know, leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I'll see you again soon.